homes on wheels, wheels on wheels, barbecue pits on lawn tractors. Don't miss this episode of Lifestyles of the Rednecks and Limits. Be part of the Redneck Luxury Pool Party. Come along for the ride as I, Robin Leach, take you on a fantastic tour of luxury homes, fortune and yachting through bios and swamps and redneck romance. Deep in the heart of Texas, we direct from his high-rise villa in Buck Tussle, Texas. We join this man who is valet to the original arbiter of all things funky, Pop Daddy, to the fabulous Pitmaster T. From high-tech mobile bag phones, from Pop Daddy's stretch DeLorean. Here he is. <laughs> You put your coal all right so this is the hopper you open it up and you put your coal in here it'll hold uh, really just a little bit more than one of those uh, KBB bags the large ones and of course you see down there the grate all right so I'm gonna crawl inside um, the coal comes from up there where you are and of course it slowly burns until it bumps into this and that's what stops it which is of course removable and when that door is shut it goes right through there all right so this is the main chamber and, and the smoke is going to come from right right down here and then there's a heat shield that we'll talk about in a minute all right so this right here is the smoke inlet so down here, this is your ash chute. So you put your wood chunks here, and if you look up in there, we take this off. There is that goes into the chamber, and then it comes down and then across. All right, your your all your uh, coal is up there. This, like I showed you before, stops that. And down here you put your wood chunk. So the ashes come down, and I know that doesn't sound like it's going to ignite it, but it does. Uh, it gets over five, six hundred degrees in this area, so those wood chips are going to smolder. Across this plate, and it comes out here and here, rolls around your food, and up through this stack right here. All right, the next question people want to know is what are the sides, sizes of the three grates? All the grates are 16 inches deep, so we got 16 by 21 and a quarter for the bottom shelf. And they do stop. Well, they do hang. We got 16 by 23 and a half for the second shelf or the middle shelf. And 16 by 23 and a half with the top shelf. And let me quickly do the math in my head. That would be, that's a total of 1,092 cubic inches of storage space. The bottom shelf, I want to say was 340. And the, uh, and I readjusted it too, because it really is, you could probably, even though the, the shelf itself is 21 and um, a quarter, uh, the slot that you sl stick it in, the width is, which is really where your brisket could go is like 21 and a half. So figuring out on that, the bottom shelf is 340 cubic inches and the two top shelves are 376 inches. Now there was something else I wanted to figure out. Oh, that says nothing if I remove these two shelves and I construct something that goes in here, comes up and suspends racks of ribs or briskets with hooks. Done that before. I did that uh, in my uh, seven uh, cubic foot um, Louisiana grills vertical smoker, pellet smoker, and uh, got more ribs in there than 
really, I, I, the great thing is I got the ribs in there without having to worry about ribs dripping blood on other ribs and getting those black spots. So um, roughly, I think since, you know, ribs are about that long, because um, I, I didn't want them to bring them down here, I could probably get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 racks of ribs. Whereas on here, I could probably get one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven racks of ribs on those shelves. Or more, actually, if you use a uh, rib thing, you know, a rib, rib shelf, whatever it's called. And this has only been filled up twice. We are going to clean it out, and uh, I'm going to dress it up with uh, uh, flaxseed oil, which I used on the, uh, the Meat Mama 3000 and some other pits, too, to give it a nice sheen. You know, I'm, like I said, I was jacking around with this. And uh, I had made a repair because this is a prototype deep in there. Um, I'll tell you more about that. And uh, I've, I've fired it up a couple times since then, and it'll probably be a fire up again, and I want to see the effect on that. And also, uh, my, my um, therms are not registering properly, and that is because a regular 3-inch is not going to do. It needs to come out about 5 to 6 inches in order to get an accurate uh, reading. So those are the modifications that we are going to do this session. She is a piece. Can I blow my guitar? seasoning process. This first step you won't have to do because everything you've got is all fresh, but mine sat around for two years, so I need to do some cleanup. Uh, the one area of concern on this when everything else is insulated is this bottom. Um, I, you know, I can see because stuff collects down in there, salts and stuff like that, that it would rot first, but there are, it doesn't go straight to the bottom. Uh, there's another layer underneath there. So I'm going to take a wire brush, electric wire brush, and I'm going to polish up what I can, and then we're going to apply flaxseed oil, spray it on, and then we're going to get this pit up to temp. Make sure that I mark this with uh, food, but this is my flaxseed oil I put in here. Get it to a mist. I don't know if it'll do it. There we go. It's kind of thick.
Smells like a pumpkin. I'm gonna hit this again in a little while. start an updraft. These things are cold and you pour the coals in. They don't tend to want to like them. I got coals. Put them in. And I'm going to put some more coal in right now. Now I have found that in the natural lighting, heating that up helps. And also leaving the hopper door open for about 15 minutes. And the ash door is also open. Uh, so we're going to, and there'll be a lot of smoke at this period of time. But in about 15 minutes, I'm going to shut that door. Normally I put wood in there. But we're not doing any barbecuing, we're just uh, going to test out the barbecue guru control management tonight. And um, we're not smoking anything, so we're just going to do that and uh, uh, what else? And season this thing. We need to get it up to about. pressure wash the outside gently. I take a look at my, what do you call these things, racks. Everything seems to be pretty well done. I love the seasoning on this. Uh-oh, look what I did. Bad daddy. Okay. This one's a little dirty. That one I could probably clean off and stick back in. So I got some degreaser on it. That's the only tray I want to clean. I'm going to hit it with a pressure washer. Okay, so I wiped this thing down, and I'm going to give a couple more tips. And this is my theory. If anyone disagrees, please write me. Tell me what you think. I think that in order to keep these things a little fluffy, they should not be compressed unless you're using them. So my opinion is we should leave it like that or like that, okay? It also lets air flow in and out of it. And the same thing here. Just let it hang out a little bit. Go ahead, put that shelf in. I will probably, when I use this the next time, probably give another squirt of that uh, flaxseed oil. So leave this sucker open just about like that. That way all your seals are not compressed. Okay, so we vacuumed this out. Yep, I'm actually going to spray it with some seasoning oil. We know this stuff will burn off, but that's not the point. The point is to make sure the box will not do any rusting. 
until the next time I'm using it. I do the same thing with this guy too. Look, it's beginning to rest right there. And that's it. Hey, y'all, tell everybody, Mr. Jordan's in town. I got a dollar and a quarter, and I'm just ran the clown. But don't let nobody play me cheap. I got 50 cents more that I'm going to keep. So let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get together and let the good times roll. Yeah, no matter whether it's rainy weather, birds of a feather gotta stick together. So get yourself under control and go out and get together and let the good times roll. to watch